Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Into the Pit. And I have here Miss Liz Anton. And she's had some experiences she'd like to talk about and uh, some of the people that have kind of changed her mind about the afterlife. So um, before we get started, Liz, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Liz. I consider myself logical minded. I call myself a sciencey skeptic. And I was raised culturally Jewish, but never believed in God. I actually still don't, but I have, that's what I always associate with an afterlife. So I always thought of that as wishful thinking. I mean, who wouldn't want to believe that? I just had never seen any reason to make me believe it. So unfortunately in 2015, I lost my dad. I was pretty young and really didn't know at all how to deal with it. And I just decided I was going to take a huge shot in the dark and just basically Google if there would be anything that could give me valid evidence of some form of survival of consciousness and kind of turned into a crazy story. And I have since written a book on the topic and have a podcast called WTF Just Happened. Okay. So um, what personally have you experienced that has kind of changed your mind? Okay. Well, the thing that even opened me up to start having personal experiences was the very first thing I found was kind of went to see if there was any evidence of past life memories. And I found some researchers and Dr. Jim Tucker from the University of Virginia. Then from there, I just went, you know, found more and more, including scientists who are studying psychic mediums. So that's where all the personal experiences began to happen. I decided after reading a lot of research and um, up to quintuple blinded studies on psychic mediums, one of the first personal experiences I had was I decided to get a medium reading. Um, I kind of thought that was nonsense. I'd never had one. I never would have had one. I mean, a little bit at parties as games, but you know, they were never gave me anything to think it was anything other than a fun party trick, you know? So I found like a few different mediums, which kind of comes into how this ties into a, a personal experience with it. One of the first ones I found was this woman who no longer is giving readings and she was very low key. Um, I'd actually found her going to a talk on some of the kind of more psi paranormal research and I got the name of her, of a medium and I was already on a wait list with another which I'll go into in a second and so I you know no one the person I got the name from didn't know who I was I wrote her I gave her aside from my first name Liz which is com which is pretty common I gave all fake information I even used a VPN in case there was some technology when I emailed about the session and I used, you know, fake last name. She ended up saying she wanted to be paid in cash. Although for future medium readings, when they want you to pay in advance, I've had friends, not family members pay using their Venmo or PayPal or however. So there is no way she could know who I am. And so I went out there and I mean, she, new things that she just could not have known by normal means that absolutely blew me away. And like I said, she didn't know who I was. She never asked for my full name, never got it. And I was, I was pretty amazed. I can't say that changed my mind. I mean, it's just, it, it opened my mind. I put it into a, what, like, what was that? Uh, what I would call a WTF. And I, 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 I couldn't explain how she did what she did. And I'd been researching a lot, but, you know, I mean, kind of talking about defying the laws of the universe as I understood them to be. So one experience isn't going to change my mind, but that experience combined with a lot of the research was wow. part of it. And I have plenty more experiences, which I'm happy to talk about too. So. Yeah, I was like you, I was very skeptical of these people and thinking, you know, they just could, uh, I guess, pick up on your 
body movements and little telltale signs and what have you. And I was like, nah, this isn't possible. And my wife, who is very much a believer and has abilities herself, um, she went to a friend of hers house where there was a medium that was going to be there and, you know, was going to do readings. And we're sitting there at the table. Now, mind you, I'm like, yeah, I didn't give up any information about myself. And she was able to tell me things. There's absolutely no way she could have known. Uh, one being that she, as soon as we sat down, she looked at me and said, uh, you just lost someone today, didn't you? And I did. I didn't tell her who. And she said, uh, I know his name starts with a B and he's kind of like a father figure to you. Well, it was my grandpa. My grandpa's name was Byron. And how could we explain that? And then she uh, she told my wife, she says, yeah, you're going to end up with a white cat with one blue eye and one green eye. And my wife kind of was like, kind of set aback because she'd always dreamed about having a cat that was white with one blue eye and one green eye. And lo and behold, a few months later, I was, uh, I went with her. She was thinking getting her nails done or something like that. And I didn't want to sit in there with all those women. So there was a pet store next door and I went in and they had a cat in the window that was white with the blue eye and a green eye. And they were having a special that day with, you know, had all the shots and everything, you know, spayed, neutered, whatever, all, all that was done, 20 bucks. And I just, I couldn't resist. <laughs> I had to get it for her, you know. <laughs> that's amazing. And yeah, then, that's, yeah. You know, I want to tell you one more thing and then I'll, I'll let you go. But um, she, she started laughing and we're like, what? She goes, for some reason, I keep hearing the water boy. Why am I hearing the water boy? And what made us laugh is between my wife and the kids, our running joke is we're always doing quotes from the water boy. <laughs> like when we're driving around, we'll start doing, you know, uh, H2O, Gatorade, you know, all that. <laughs> I'm like, how would she know? That's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she was saying stuff like my cat had recently passed away too and I hadn't told anyone I hadn't posted on social media at all so if you could say maybe she was like had someone who was like videoing me and googling like no, there was no thing someone could find and this was also like an exceptionally sweet cat so she said oh your cat that just passed recently is with your dad I was like what and she I mean she thinks this is totally normal so I'm there like amazed she was like yeah the one who just passed the sweet one and she knew years ago my grandmother had lost a young child like she knew my grandmother and I were, looked really alike I mean just things you know she knew the age of my father which if people are saying she's looking at how I look he had me a lot later in life so it would have been not the logical guess for her to get you know wow. not the exact age but the age range and you know, it's just not what you would have guessed looking at me because he's, you know, he could have been my grandpa. So, it was, and, you know, it just, and to add to that, I've had other medium readings on the phone and I just say yes, no. And I use a Google voice number in case anyone's wondering. And so <laughs> they can't be reading my face or expressions or Googling photos of me or Googling my phone number. I mean, not that some don't, but there's a, per, a percent that don't google at all and get very accurate information and you know you only need one or two who do really you only need one who can do this to show that consciousness survives in some way oh my god yeah we got to be really good friends with this lady and she even became part of our paranormal team so we go out and do an investigation she would come in she would do a reading she sit down with someone and we went to an investigation where she was telling this lady, Oh, you have an aunt that nobody talks about in the family. And, you know, she lost a child and, uh, you know, just all this information lays going, no, no, nothing like that. I don't have anything like that in the family. And 
about a couple of days later, this lady called me up and she goes, you won't believe this, but I was talking to my mom and she had a sister that w- would go running around and partying and sleeping with all these guys. And she had a child and the child passed away and I never even knew anything about this. Wow. So That's explain it. <laughs> amazing. And that also shows if they know things that you don't, which has happened to me. And then I was like, no, I don't think so. And then I found out it was true. It shows they're not reading your mind too, which is kind of a question in parapsychological research. Well, right. you know, are they actually talking to people who've passed away, you know, discarnates or are they just reading your mind? I don't want to say just reading your mind because that's a pretty absolutely astounding, amazing thing if they are, but you know, and some of them can read minds, but some, when they say they're connecting with someone who's passed and then they get stuff about them, but you say no, and you didn't know. And then you check with your family and find out it's true. You're just like, well, wow. it, it blows your mind. I mean, she, she knew about my first wife. She knew that, um, that we had lost five children before my daughter was born. You know, the, the stories of the, the children actually looking down on dad, you know, and that kind of thing. It just yeah. blows the mind. That's, yeah, that's amazing. And I'm so sorry for those losses. And, you know, I mean, to, to hear hopefully that they're, looking there gives a form of comfort you know well you know it 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 still hurts especially since one was almost full term but Mm. you know uh, it was just the way things were meant to be and they're they're spirit guides now so (laughs) yeah yeah i um i did i i did read and hear of a few stories and I heard mediums give other readings about, you know, babies that, you know, fetuses that didn't turn into babies and didn't turn into children that some have said, oh, you know what, I wasn't ready. And then they decided to come back. They're like, now your child that's sitting here decided, you know, they didn't want to be born at that point. So I, I, I mean, I don't yet have children, but I think that seems to have given some comfort and I just thought that was a very I would imagine if I was in that situation that would be very healing to hear that you know yeah it it does help you know yeah yeah the things that mediums are able to pick up on you know I I don't I just don't know how without research and the things that they're telling me is stuff you're just not going to find online no, no. I mean, just amazing. Like I can share another experience I had. Um, I mean, I had multiple medium related, which I'm happy to go into, but another oh, yeah. sort of paranormal I can talk about is I once bent a spoon and had another spoon bending experience. What? And I'm happy to talk. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, I mean, it was like had multiple layers to it, which made it so crazy was So I told you I had that one medium reading at that same time I was I was trying researching mediumship and getting different readings so during this time I was following and reading everything by Dr. Julie Beischel and Mark Bacuzzi through Winbridge do you know their work I know I know the name Beischel yeah they do up to they're the founders of the Winbridge Institute and the Winbridge Research Center, and they do scientific studies of mediums to research if they are, um, if you know, are they getting accurate information to what percent? Um, are they do everything where they eliminate any chance of them doing cold reading and hot reading? I mean, you can read up to their quintuple blinded studies from their website to learn more. And, you know, don't want to speak too, too much about it. I felt something, you know, I wasn't, you know, that I would leave that to Mark and Julie to speak, Mark and Dr. Bachel to speak properly about. But so I was going down the list and I see their certified mediums and I find the first one who's in New York and her name's Laura Lynn Jackson. And I mean, she ended up 
playing a pretty important role in my life. She introduced me to this woman who probably was my main rock and mentor in my grief and researching this, who sadly passed away, Fran Ginsburg. Um, she passed a cancer over quarantine. It was unbelievable, but unbearable. But, you know, I always have just such, you know, gratitude that she came into my life during just a time I felt I couldn't even go on. But so but before I met Fran, before any of that, I found, I went down the list for Winbridge and the first New York based medium I found was named Laura Lynn Jackson. And I emailed about getting a reading. At the time I did not know this, but she's, you know, what considered one of the world's top mediums. She has, you know, long, long wait lists. So, you know, I think she stopped doing readings and, um, but at this point, you know, she's still working her way through her wait list. And I mean, I wrote this, uh, I emailed her years ago and I'm still on her wait list. But regardless, she did group activities and, and group workshops. And at this point also, I'll just say I picked her, my thinking at this point was she was the first one I saw that was in New York. And I was New York based and I thought getting a reading, I'd wanna watch the medium to make sure they're not Googling or cheating. But I've come to think phone is more evidential as long as you give a fake number and don't give your last name because then you know they're not looking at you. But right. regardless, I 100% trust Laura to be genuine and I've seen her read and groups and she's unbelievable. But back to spin bending, so I'm going off a little on a tangent. So <laughs> I go to her workshop and it was a little, I would say coincidental, but you know, mediums will say there are no coincidences, is I was also taking classes at the Rhine Institute with Lloyd Arbach and John Cruz, if you know them. Sounds familiar. I'm not going to say yeah. off the top of my head, but uh, they sound familiar. Yeah, they're parapsychologists. And in one of Lloyd's classes, he was mentioning spin bending. And so the night before Laura's, I was like, well, I had always thought spin bending was, um, like fantasy magic trick. And I thought, well, you know, next few days I'll have to research places that do this because if I ever saw anyone bend a spoon or, exper or experienced it, if I saw someone, I would have thought it was a magic trick. But if I experienced it, I would really give all this some credit. So I ended up going to Laura's and oddly, you know, the very next day after having that thought and writing a little note in my app, you know, find spin bending places, Laura said in her workshop, oh, we're going to be bending spoons today. It's like, what? Um, and so she's passing out all these spoons. And I'll just add, I went with a friend who was like kind of a big guy, meaning that he's a lot stronger than me by far. So, but he's kind of a very mellow guy. So he doesn't have much energy. I'm like a really high energy person. He's just like super chill. And so they pass out spoons and Laura's like, oh, everyone just try to bend it naturally. And I'm trying and you know, obviously I don't have that strength. My friend I'm with, Jerome, is trying, you know. And then Laura's like, okay, stare at it. I forgot what, like you look at it, say bend, shout bend. And then I did that. And I saw, I look over and I see other people bending their spoons. And I was like, what the, like, oh my God. And <laughs> I was so shocked. Then I felt my spoon get like super hot, but it didn't hurt. And it got really soft and I just bent it. And my strong friend wasn't able to bend his and they say it was energy and I'm the high energy. I mean, still have the spoon. And then second part to it, if you would think this was a trick, I went to another spoon bending workshop held by the Forever Family Foundation where I volunteer and they help also that Fran Ginsburg and her husband, um, Bob, who still is a mentor, an important person in my life are the founders of it. And I went to another spoon bending workshop and this one was being taught by Lloyd Arbach and a few mediums, I think Janet Mayer, and I forget who, but it, like a few other mediums were in the workshop with me and there was maybe only six of us. And, you know, all of us were actually pretty like small, like, like women. I wouldn't say any of us are like strong. And we're taking out all the spoons. Lloyd's like dumping them on the table. I'm the only one who's not a medium, not spiritual. 
and meaning I have like the least access to like energy as they say they think they bet that bend spoons and I couldn't bend any and I'm starting to hand the same ones I can't bend to these mediums and they're just bending them up like it's nothing so I couldn't do it again and I thought it was evidential that the spoons I couldn't bend then people who are mediums are bending the exact same ones literally two seconds later so that's crazy I would crazy, love, right? love to see if I would be able to do something like that. I just, I don't think I have the, the energy to do it. But wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I haven't been able to since just that one time and when I really needed to do it emotionally. So, you know, these are just small parts of all my personal experiences that keep <laughs> happening while I'm researching. Yeah, it, it's amazing what these folks can do and the, uh, the, you know, the energy that they have, not only to do these things, but also to help heal and comfort people. It's, you know, I've, I've lost quite a few people in my life as well. Um, my father, my brother, and my best friend within just about four or five years all ended themselves. And it's devastating, but it's comforting when I'll, I'll be talking to a medium and we're on Zoom and they'll say, hey, you got somebody behind you. And they describe my brother to a T. So he's always here with me. Um, my my uncle, who I barely knew, uh, he, he passed away in prison and he spent most of his life in prison. And they describe him to a T. They every time they see him, he just comes in to say he's proud of me and say hey and keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. I just don't know how they do it. I am. Uh, I'm really yeah, and I, I agree with you. It's just it's so healing and soothing and yeah, no one knows how they do it. That's the thing. I think that's where I always get stuck a little bit. I'm like, but how? I mean, mediums don't know that. None of us know what is the substance of consciousness that, you know, we continue in when we pass away. I mean, there's little bits we know, but, or possible, I wouldn't say no. There are little bits of theories, you know, like, you know, like, I guess you've have you heard about micro uh, my apologies if I'm pronouncing this wrong microtubulars and microtubules um I'm not sure I don't think I've heard that tiny hint of how this works that um these were being are being talked about by Dr. Stuart Hameroff and Sir um Roger Penrose who've worked with Stephen Hawking I mean they're won Nobel prizes they're you know really like admirable physicists and they both are researching afterlife evidence and they seem to think there's a part of our brain they're calling microtubules or tubulars and it's a possibility i mean tiny possibility like no one's making definite claims they're thinking that's a part of our brain that seems to you know if our consciousness is like a cloud that's downloading it and you know maybe down the line like you know all our consciousnesses are up there and as we live, we download like the one that is us. And I mean, this is getting a little philosophical. I don't know this yet, but you know, maybe mediums just have more like in their brain that can download diverse ones. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's fascinating. Once you talk about it too much, it gets into philosophy, not evidence, but it's fun well, to take time to think about, you know? Well, I, I believe that there is a universal consciousness and that okay. we do download certain information and that's why you'll have a guy on one side of the world and a guy on the other side of the world who will come up with kind of the same idea at the same time. I mean, it's been evident when you have somebody that comes up with an invention and uh, a person somewhere else, you have no connection whatsoever, but yet they'll have the same idea around the same time. I guess it's just a a race to see who's going to put it together first. <laughs> but, right. you know, um, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. Do you watch Ghost Hunters? I don't really, but I mean, I'm fascinated by the top, by 
the topics, you know, paranormal right. investigation. So tell me what well, anything there, about it. There was an episode where they had uh, a a camera that was that could take photos of like um, ult, the ult, was it ultraviolet light or whatever. I don't remember what, but anyway, it could pick up your aura around your body and here you got the guys from ghost hunter sitting on the couch and in a chair next to the couch is this medium and as they're taking the uh, video of uh, of this guy's aura you could see it slowly moving towards the guy sitting on the couch and basically surrounded the, his aura and he was able to get information that way and so it's I mean, scientific, I don't know, but I saw it on television. It's a camera trick. <laughs> I don't know how, but it's pretty incredible. Yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty it's fascinating. I mean, there's just, we don't know yet, you know? I mean, that that's really interesting. We just, you know, things that are labeled impossible keep happening. And yeah, I mean, we'll, or even, you know, you were talking about two people having the same invention or like, trend movements where suddenly you know the world is thinking about one thing you know and yeah have, have you followed the global consciousness project that's studying kind of those things i have been be really into that i haven't followed it but i i know the premise of it and i i know also that you have uh spiritualists and and uh mediums that are trying to get us all to think more positively and that way we can change the world because i mean let's face it everybody's basically thinking negative and all these negative things are happening so if they can change the that well then maybe you know our environment would change are we headed to the end of the world i don't know i just know if the aliens come i want to go with them <laughs> I, I don't disagree with you there at this point yeah yeah I mean, I mean in reality there probably have been I would it seems that there's like lots of ends of worlds like lots of big bangs big crunches you know tons of different worlds we probably lived on all different planets as species but you know let's not speed it up <laughs> the end of the world <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I'm ready to go. I mean, there's some days I get so down. It's like, just end it all now, God. Just send a send a comet and just blow up the whole world and get it over with. Oh, um, I, I hear you. I hear you. It can get just so sad sometimes, you know? It's just, and people can be so mean to each other. And, you know, you're kind of like, why? Why? Yeah, I, I experienced that. Um, I'd, I'd made a comment on on a, a Instagram post. And mind you, it wasn't anything bad. I was just, it was a funny post and I was just yeah. adding to it, you know, my own funny spin on it. And somebody just decided they wanted to come in and be ugly. And uh, instead of just backing away from it, I fell into the trap and I got ugly. And then I realized what I did. And I'm like, this is not me. I don't do these kind of things. And so I got on there and I was pretty much apologetic about it, but you know, they want to keep enticing and enticing. And I'm like, look, you win. I'm, I'm done. And, oh. and then I get blocked, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, you started this mess. Why are you, why are you blocking me? I'm, even if you don't agree with me, I still, you know, I still want to talk to people. I still want to be friends with people. There's no reason why if we don't agree with something, we can't be friends. So right. let's, let's stop all this arguing and hatred that seems to be going on in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. You know, I mean, I think I try to think sometimes when I see the meanest comments, I mean, I'm like, maybe it's just a row, like a bot or sometimes you know, it is some of the, you know, the farms, you know, that people are just, you know, people who are taking jobs, you know, I mean, I guess a lot of things that you're like, wow, I'd hate that person. You hear the story and you're like, it's really different than I thought. Like even, 
you know, something I, I think everyone can agree on that's horrible are the scammers, all the online scammers. And anyone who does that, you're like, what a horrible person. But then I heard a podcast where some of them have been trafficked and they're in and they're stuck somewhere and there's been traffic so this person who is scamming you just has no choice and i mean not that it's okay but it just it, I, I wish i could remember the podcast i'd suggest it but it was just such an eye-opener when i heard that i'm like you know when you're having an interaction you really don't know the story and i mean we could 100 percent agree the people who traffic them i mean it's Jail for evil. life, disgusting, pure evil, pure yeah. evil, and the people in charge. But that individual you're engaging with, sure, some might just be evil, but some, yeah, I, I don't know. That was just for some reason that just really sort of, it was just recent. It was like maybe two weeks ago I heard this. It was it was a big change in perspective that how little of the story you know of who you decide to hate. And yeah, once you really know, go ahead. If you find out this is, you know, one of the people running the scams, go ahead. But that little small, like five minute interaction, you know, speaking from a place of like privilege in the sense that like I did not get scammed ever in that sense, you know, I know how to fall, not to fall for them and people who do, you know, yeah, I mean, there's a level to how your grades of anger in situations, but I don't know. That was that was a big eye opener to me. I guess we're getting a little way up from paranormal, but still, I guess it ties into like an energy and global consciousness, you know. So. Oh, it's it's awful. These people they hack accounts. Uh, my mother in law had her stuff hacked, and she had to close all her credit cards and all this other stuff because somebody had hacked her account. Uh, I had somebody just this morning who messaged me and asked me, you know, what would you do with $2,400 if you had it in your account right now? And I'm like, who is this? I mean, it, I could tell where, what account it was coming from, but I knew it was hacked because this person wouldn't do this. And they're, right. they're like, why? And I'm like, this, this just sounds like one of, you know, somebody had hacked an account. And then, you know, it's like, oh, I wouldn't be scamming and that bs and you know all this and i'm like okay i know this person wouldn't talk like this right and, right and they're like uh well what would you do and i'm like well i would help out these veterans that i'm trying to help right now and they're like oh well give me your cash app and i'm like nope <laughs> nope <laughs> <laughs> i'm not doing it oh uh, no of course not you know i mean i, I shouldn't say of course not because they're smart people you know they're falling for this stuff and yeah. oh and i mean just, that's also i'll just add that's very kind that that's the first thing you would think to do you know <laughs> that, you know helping and supporting you know I mean, that's really it it's about helping others as much as we can and yeah. you know well you get a lot of the older generation that they don't understand about you know the hackers and all that stuff and so they're they're taking this as a genuine conversation with someone that they know and they trust them and then boom they get hurt or they, you know they get ripped off uh -huh. and it's it's sad that people feel like they have to do that to other people just to make a living it's not, yeah. you know, they don't think about, oh, well, maybe this was a single mother who's got, you know, three or four children and you just took their rent money and their, their grocery money for the month and you've left them devastated. Well, what do you do? It's not yeah. right. It's not right. And that's one of the reasons why I think this world is the way it is right now is that people just don't care about other people anymore. Yeah. I'm going to just question, though, about any more. I feel like, sadly, this has always been a part of human nature. I think maybe now more than ever, we have access to non-face-to-face -face interaction. So, but I don't know. I mean, you look back to like a couple thousand years ago, there were tribal wars and people killing each other still. I mean, I think, unfortunately, that there's a portion of human nature that's very loving and a portion that's I like to say pure evil and whether 
you know, it's questionable. Some people will say nobody's evil. And I do think, as I was saying about the scammers, and I think some people that behave purely evil, if you, you know, as they talk about with near-death experiences, you know, once you understand everyone's situation, you'll say, oh, well, nobody's actually evil if you knew their whole story. Like, but I don't know. I, I have a hard time believing that some people aren't pure evil. I don't think the majority of people who do bad things, that's all there are to them. But I do think there are people that make a lot more evil choices and become worse and worse people. And I would have yeah. to say there are a few pure evil people. And if you just, you know, it's the exception of the each end of the extreme. Some people who are just so loving that, you know, but I think people have always been, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm just being negative. I think people have always had a horrible part where just, you know, it sort of transforms how it's done depending on the generations and technology or lack thereof or, you know. I mean, each generation, you're going to have hateful people. It's just inevitable. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, we were at a point in time where more people were, I guess, not not very loving. And then I, I, I don't know, from growing up in the 70s and the 80s, okay. I, I saw things kind of shift and it seemed like mm. more people were loving than weren't, but I feel like we're going backwards now. <laughs> we really? got to <laughs> we got to change this world. We get we have to all try to start thinking more positive and be more um, understanding and loving, and maybe things will change. Yeah, maybe, and try to listen to people, and you know, what was the quote I just heard? on something too like I believe it might have been said by this lawyer Brian Stevenson I don't know if you know him but he helps he's fights for people who've done just evil things and he you know I mean what you can have mixed feelings about but he really he, he's very like understanding of a lot you know I don't think he would just pick anyone he, the people are the most disadvantaged and then therefore act based on like lives of trauma to get them like you know, I, I mean, not to like, he doesn't, you know, he, he's a very ethical person. He's not like lying and getting, you know, like cheating the system defense attorney. These aren't people who can hire the fancy lawyers and get away with, you know, cheating the system. He really just tries to give everyone an equal fair shot. And he just yeah. said, you know, you are so much more than the worst thing you've ever done. And I agree with that with most people. Again, I, I do think there are some people that are just pure, like, horrible. And he doesn't, mean you don't have consequences like you murder it like a five-year-old child like i mean no i don't think you should go back in society but agreed you know <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah no it's not like oh you had a hard life we're sorry but there comes from something of understanding maybe you had all these things that led up to it not to let that person off the hook but to like stop things from get, even getting to that point you know what i mean yeah yeah well in the future if that makes sense this might sound ridiculous but i i think if you've done something like that they they should have some kind of program where you work towards i guess redemption where you you know you are apologetic but you still have to pay the consequences you know it's not fair this child is not here anymore and you are i mean and maybe i'm i'm evil for saying this but i think you deserve to be ended <laughs> yeah yeah i i don't agree with that like the penalty only because and this is not a kind thing i just think like you know you've killed a bunch of children let's say and like it seems like that penalty is just too easy now that you hear about like yeah. You know, I, I feel it's getting you out of paying the price if you want the truth. Oh, well, yeah, I can see it that way. Yeah. And you have to know 100% for sure because people, I mean, I've just heard too many stories, just, you know, reading about people who are wrongly accused. You know, it's just, it's irreversible if you make a mistake and humans are too flawless. But also, I mean, if you know for a fact, if you saw, you know, like one of the school shooters, I mean, um, like, I just feel it's, you're getting off the hook too easily with the death penalty. Like, you live to your last day knowing what you did, you know? True. 
we we've gotten off the subject here. we've so gotten off the subject <laughs> but there is something about the nature of love and evil so just so <laughs> your listeners don't think we've i mean I, completely. I, yeah yeah let's we could let's take it back <laughs> i mean i i still believe in my heart we will get the answers to a lot of things once we pass over and i think that we all have um that opportunity to be spirit guides and things for other people uh, once we pass to the other side uh, uh, i wasn't a big believer in um in past lives and that kind of thing but i did a, a past life regression where i basically hypnotized taken back in time and i was a child in the 1800s you know and then i talked to a medium and she did a reading on me and she's one that's really big into past lives and she says yeah you you um were a, you lived in the 1800s but apparently i had like three different lives during that time so <laughs> wow i guess short ones if they were all you know and they're, well, apparently it is. i guess yeah yeah, I did a past life regression too with um, a medium also connects past life regressions called Renee Buck. And mm -hmm. she was certified also by Forever Family Foundation. She's a great medium. And um, I have mixed feelings about past life regressions, I but I too. do think there's past lives. Yeah. I mean, I had amazing experience with it. I just, it, it was wonderful experience. Um, but I have a hard time using that as evidence. But the work of Dr. Jim Tucker and Ian Stevenson, the late Ian Stevenson, now that to me is something that makes me think past lives are most likely. Plus, one of the first thoughts I had about this was, you know, before I thought anything there could be an afterlife or anything like that, I, this was not my thought now, but at the time I thought, okay, so our consciousness is created by our brain cells and all the neurons connecting. Mm -hmm. Now this has all happened to create me, Liz, and I'm like experiencing, like I put myself and feel that, but just because it happened once, why can I not experience another life again? Why could a bunch of brain cells that coincidentally create another human being, not Liz, not even connected to me, not karma based or anything like that, but why could another bunch of, neurons just come together to create another consciousness and i'm experiencing that like that that falls 100 percent into material logic i mean the biggest materialist who thinks anything after life and everything's nonsense that is just as logical that it would happen once in fact it's less logical i almost think that it would happen once oh. if that makes sense you know that was my yeah. very first thought so well then I may be totally off base here, but it's always been my belief that you know we're we're made up of energy. Okay, you can't destroy energy. You can transfer it, but you can't you can't destroy it. And um, I think that once you pass away, there's still an energy left behind, in which we see as ghosts and spirits. Maybe this energy gravitates to a newborn you know and you're basically coming back but you know what that transference of energy you may not remember that you're you used to be you know who you used to be but there are people that have described their past lives and actually found evidence to back up who they were maybe that yeah. consciousness uh carried it i mean the, the the power or the energy carried the consciousness with them and that's why they can remember i i don't know i wish i knew I the know. answer but yeah. it's no, feasible i, I kind of agree with you i have come to yeah since my first thought that i was saying when I thought consciousness was created by brain cells with all this research I pretty much agree with what you've said I've come to think that our cells are somehow stored in energy and we pulsate in and out of different experiences in different dimensions some as humans here some 
as probably, you know, beings on other planets, some material, some non. I think, you know, there's multiple dimensions. We already know that from string theory and how consciousness ties into all this. I mean, I wish I knew. I don't, you know? <laughs> As a medium once said to me, I was asking all these questions. She was like, if I could answer that, I'd have a trillion dollars. I'd be the smartest person on the planet. Yeah, true. <laughs> I mean, I wish I could answer. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one day one of these uh, spring, excuse me, one of these string theorists, um, scientists can come up with that answer, uh, you know, or maybe it's just mm -hmm. something we're never meant to know. Maybe we'll yeah. know after. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I, I mean, know. people come back from NDE saying some have said that they've figured all that out, but they can't really remember it. I mean, some have had stuff they remember, but some will be like, I understood the meaning of life, but I couldn't remember it. I also think maybe it's something in our brains we just can't understand. Like, we can't understand the concept of infinity. You can kind of intellectually get it but can you really understand infinity when you think picture infinitely in the past infinitely in the future and then you add that to space too infinitely going out past the universe i mean your minds just cannot wrap around that really yeah. my theory on that and once again i have to be totally off base is like time uh like god one in the same and it's like a, a a ring you know there's no beginning and there's no end it's just constant so we can't wrap our brains around that but why not you know yeah. possible Don't know. time seems to be such an illusion not only the you know einstein talking about you know time relativity but you know, even the way like we, you know, people who've had NDEs will know things that are going to happen in the future. You know, if anyone watched Netflix surviving death, I mean, tragically, this woman knew she was going to lose her son. And, you know, my mentor, Fran, um, knew the day her daughter was going to pass away. She didn't know that was what was going to happen. But Fran and Bob lost their daughter, Bailey. And that morning was in a car accident. There was no reason to think she was. 15 years old that Fran just woke up at about four in the morning and was like something terrible is going to happen today and they all kept the family together I mean we're as responsible as could be and you know she sadly passed in an accident heading home from a family dinner you know I mean they couldn't have been more careful and it just it, it combines what is already written and planned for the future what does the future mean I mean and I've known little things. I've noticed, I mean, just stupid things. Like, I mean, I wish I could know big things. And of course, now that I study this, I make myself like nuts thinking I know big things. Like, you know, after you have lost, I think there's always a bit of PTSD. So I'll be like, oh, I'm anxious. That means like my mom's going to die. Now I know it. Like, I'll do that to myself all the time. But I'm not really predicting it. But I've noticed, you know, when I write down dreams, and I've heard others have done that, and there have been books on it, like, I believe J.W. Dunn, even in the 1920s, wrote a book, I think Experiment with Time, where he noticed when he'd have dreams, they were things that came true. When I started writing down my dreams, I noticed that too, but really stupid things. I'm like, can't I dream the lottery number? Like, I dreamt that they were giving, like, a certain juice at my gym class, you know? And I was like, well, that's right. really cool, because I was showing that, how different time is. But, you know, I haven't ever, I didn't dream anything useful, but just very interesting so you kind of makes you think what is the flow of time if we can predict these things you know yeah. maybe since uh there's the possibility of past lives and that whole uh ring theory that i came up with maybe that consciousness catches up with uh you know it's it just they say history repeats itself maybe it literally does maybe it's like having a, a a dvd of a movie and you just start the movie over again or eventually maybe the consciousness catches up with what had happened previously and you're seeing it you know i don't yeah. know I, yeah. it's it, it's pretty incredible to think of mind-blowing to think the possibilities yeah yeah and then that makes you wonder, well, 
why am I still making these same mistakes? Do I have to keep making the mistakes every <laughs> life? Or is that when you start getting instincts, you reach a dimension where you're like, eh, you know, you've done this one mistake enough that maybe your 50th time in this life that you're repeating, you're like, I have a funny feeling about that. I'm not going to go do that. And, you know, like maybe you get better and better at this life each time. I mean, again, that's philosophy, but I have read that as a theory. You know, I don't know. That's so my other thought of just kind of reliving the same life with the same mistakes again and again. I mean, I have mixed feelings about that because it's like, oh, I get to relive that part of my life. But then it's like, oh, and then I also have to relive that, you know? And, yeah, there's a few things I wished I didn't have to repeat then. <laughs> Oh my God, you and me both. Yeah, probably everybody. But I think, you know, it's, that just seems not that I expect the universe to be fair, but if all we are just eternally living this one life, which I think the other is you do this with multiple lives, but it seems so unfair because some people have these just glorious lives and some people just have these brutal lives. And most of us are probably pretty much in between, but nevertheless, you know. Yeah. Well, another thing is, is, if you are repeating the same thing over and over again, and maybe that one time you finally got it right, then maybe that's your opportunity to, to, to finally move on to, you know, whatever's available to us in the afterlife. I still think there's a heaven. Um, okay. I, I was told that this was my last life. That, you know, I've, I've lived so many and this was the last one that I've already uh, or I'm fulfilling my purpose and then I can move on. And wow, who told you that? I had a medium tell me that. And now where do you think you go? Do you think you go to a permanently discarnate non-physical consciousness? Do you think you go to other physical consciousness that are maybe more advanced and like I, a kinder maybe. planet? maybe i mean i don't what would we consider to be heaven i mean is that where we finally have uh we go to a consciousness where everything is is perfect that we don't we're living in harmony and i mean i don't know that's that's what i'd like to believe that actually sounds a little bit boring though because like so much of life is about accomplishing, you know, I mean, and helping. I mean, I guess I can't, but like if everything's just perfect, what do you do? What do you, you know, can you help others? Can you do anything of use, you know? Well, maybe that's a, an advancement in our way of thinking that we don't have to help anyone. And we're more of, you know, um, and, and who says that we're not helping someone? Maybe we become that that uh, spirit guide and we are helping people to uh, to evolve we're trying to get people to come to where we're at and become spirit guides and angels and things like that so we are helping so maybe that's our purpose is we're helping but we're helping from the other side yeah i could believe that a part of it you know i mean i don't know i don't I, I i don't like to believe anything you know what i mean like i'll go into philosophy where i'm like this could be true and this could be true but i hate believing anything i like to say i've seen this and this proves this like from everything i've seen read and experienced that consciousness is just created by a brain and once and that's it everything i've experienced contradicts that i've had so many you know, I mean, I've ha I have like a traumatic day where I'm like, oh, I'm so missing my dad. I'm missing my mentor, my grandma, animals, everyone. And all, I must have made all this up and I'll go into like, you know, I'll have a really depressed day and then I have to sort of talk myself through it. Or I've become good friends too with a medium, um, Joe Peretta, and he's one of the best ones, you know, also studied by scientists and he's become a good friend of mine. And like, he'll kind of talk me out of that. I'll be like, Joe freaking out you know because you're also good friends with someone you know they're not lying to you and you know they're not um they're not delusional you know and I'm like you know I mean I have friends as I said I'm for myself like I've never believed in God or that or, you know I have friends who are friends of faith and I totally respect that but they're not coming to me saying I know this from a scientific base I saw this and this they'll be like well this is faith and I'm like that's great like I 
you know, how can I have any opinion on that? Then that, that's wonderful. I'm always happy to hear why someone thinks something. But like when Joe comes to me, he's not talking to me or Renee is another friend of mine, Renee Buck. They're not talking to me about faith. They're saying, I experienced this. And then they're doing things physically, you, you know, like knowing information they could not know. So that's, you know, I hope that didn't come off as knocking religion in any way. I mean, I hope it's only helping people who don't think consciousness survives, hoping to help give them hope that it does or, you know, so that's really why I try to say that to show my level of skepticism to help give people hope rather than knock anyone's beliefs, you know. Just, well, think about this, how, how much you miss your dad and, and your grandma right. and, and other mm -hmm. people that have been in your life and your animals. Mm -hmm. and, and if you had the opportunity to see them right now, how elated you would be, the joy that you would feel so why is it that we are that's not going to be part of our experience when we pass on to the afterlife that we're actually going to be and we've got that joy forever and ever oh it seems like it could it seems like it is from near-death experiences i guess i have a hard time thinking it's forever like you probably go on and do other things i, I mean i don't know again i don't how can i know but i mean i, I don't think, know that's just yeah. a guess I think you do see them again, I hope very much, but I think so based on near death experiences. But I guess for me, that doesn't mean I believe in a God or a heaven. It just seems like different states of consciousness from physical to non physical. I mean, if there's this huge major loving God taking care of all of us, you know, I mean, who would mind that, you know, <laughs> just to add mine. I just have no, you know, given that, you know, I mean, you could then that gets into questions of why are these people allowed to suffer? But if it was like, you know, someone like a loving, loving consciousness that's like, you guys go do you. Some things will work, some won't. Like, I'm here, I love you. Like, I created all this myself, like one consciousness. It just, that doesn't add up to me, but like, nothing. You know, I mean, I guess anyone who thinks that, I would have to say it comes from a place of belief rather than evidence. And it's great beliefs, you know, we probably all have more beliefs than we realize we do, if that makes sense, you know, because sometimes, you're still in your beliefs so yeah well, you know uh, i know a lot of people say that you know if there's a god why are there all these terrible things happening in the world mm -hmm. and yeah well the whole thing is is you could have he could have decided that you would just um everything would be perfect and you would just believe in him yeah. and and there would be no doubts and everybody got along and all that and that's great but is that true love? Is that showing true love? If somebody forced you to love them, is it true love? And so you've been given um, free will. Okay, so your parents who know better because they've experienced things and they can either let you go out and live your life for yourself and give you that free will or you could stay under their reign and they could say okay this is the step this is a step don't go outside of that but you experience bad things and you think why did my parents let me do this well that's i think that's the way god works is he's given us free will so he's here you go you love me if you want to love me that's the greatest love is if you love somebody because you want to love them and here's your free will you want free will you have to live by the consequences and also i mean i do believe in predestination but i think of it like these books that we used to get when we were kids that you read so far and then you get to that one page it says okay make this decision and go to page such and such or you make this decision and go to this to this page okay well it's been planned out already there's already an answer it's just what decisions did you make to get you to that? So either you choose this and this is going to happen if you choose it, or if you choose this, this is what's going to happen. That's just Yeah. And you can choose among the different choices, yeah. you mean? Right, right, right. But it's, it's already mapped out what's going to happen. I mean, you know, if you go touch a stove and it's been hot, you're going to burn your hand. Nothing's right. going to change that. But what changes is, do you want to go touch that or do you not want to go touch that? The, the answer is going to be there either way. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
And yeah, that's I all mean, I got to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have fun talking about beliefs, but, you know, I mean, I can go forever because I like to think, well, what if this is true? And then, you know, I mean, you can, they're all different fun ways. But yeah, in the core of it, I always try to bring myself back to what have I seen the evidence for? What haven't I? But, you know, I mean, I can spend days being like, yeah, that could be possible. But what if that was, but why, how could it be possible if this? Oh, yeah. I, see. I mean, it's, it's very fun to kind of sometimes, and I'm not putting God into this, but like, even though I don't believe in God, but sometimes I'll take like, what is the most outlandish idea I've ever heard? Now, how could, the, what if this was true? And I like to imagine ways it would be true. Now, what makes me think that couldn't be true? And I mean, it's, it's, again, that's, it's more like, like, I almost said mind games, but mind games mean something horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're playing mind games and hurting people, but like, you know, it's like game, playing with games, you know, it's just fun, you know, to be like, I don't know, take like an absurd idea and be like, how can this be true? And then also with researching all this, I'm like, but have I done that with this? And then I'll take myself back and be like, no, there's no way. Like I physically was there when I bent the spoon. And then I physically was there when I couldn't bend them, but people who have access to downloading energies, you know, psychic mediums, we're bending the same ones I couldn't, and we're all of the same physical stature and strength, pretty much, you know. So it's like I always take myself back to the facts, you know, and that, you know, it makes me, you know, able to trust myself on my, especially really griefy days, you know. I hear you. Well, mm -hmm. and, and please don't think that I'm trying to push my beliefs on you at all. No. This podcast I, uh, is about talking about afterlife and I, sharing beliefs and opinions. I mean, that's I, I'm I'm able to pretty much talk about anything. I mean, yeah. I like to I you like know, hearing I, how people think. I, it's one of my favorite things. You know, I I just have my way of thinking, and I, I don't mind sharing it. I don't push it on anyone. If somebody says, "Hey, I don't want to hear it," I hey, I I won't push it. You know, uh, I mean, I you know, I used to be a preacher. I was oh, really a, okay I was, yeah i was oh, a baptist preacher for about five years and uh okay. I, had, I had a falling out with my preacher and anyway I, I and during that period is when i lost my dad and my brother and and my my friend and i got mad and i walked away and you know I ended up having a heart attack and then my first wife left me and spent 10 years basically alone you know, and then I met my wife that I have now, and she's actually encouraged me to get back on my spiritual path again. And I mean, I'm happy with the choices that I've made, but maybe somebody else is not going to be as happy making those choices. I mean, it'd be really boring if we all made the same yeah. choices, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I love to hear how people think. Like, if you, believe in god or you know or you know on the other end if you absolutely think everything paranormal i mean that was something i used to be so i probably understand that more though i have equal respect for all but you know if you're just like none of this is true like a lot of people think you know a lot of people i admire just think every psychic medium you must know it's all nonsense i'm like you know you like, know uh, I, I, I didn't that. believe tell me yeah, yeah i didn't believe at one point but the experiences that i've had I do believe, and then the evidence of the paranormal that I've gotten on on a digital recorder and on a video camera, on a regular camera, I, I, I just can't refute what I've seen, you know? I've tried to, I'm, I'm still probably the biggest skeptic out of the whole group that, that you know, we started, but there's some things I just I can't explain and I just I, I see it you know yeah yeah you're doing these you, you do paranormal investigations you're saying oh yeah. yeah I mean so you're right there I mean if am I allowed to ask you a question or sure you, go for okay? it okay yeah when you're talking about your podcast um so what would you say is like the most mind-blowing thing that you've seen on an investigation Ooh. You know, it's stuff that we've picked up on camera that we didn't see while we were there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, a, one of the first investigations that I ever did. It was in Spring, Texas. And uh, they, 
basically the group that I was with, I used to be part of another group. Um, they had been there before, and this was their second time going around. So they had an idea of what was there. And I, I didn't know, I, I just, I didn't know, but, uh, they had their, uh, their cameras upstairs and I was up there and I was in a room by myself. Mind you, the house was empty. The people had moved out. They just, I guess they'd had enough. And they were gone. We got to go see what was there. Uh, so I'm walking around barefooted. Okay. I hate wearing shoes. Just tell you that right now. I hate shoes for the fashion. But anyway, I'm walking around and I have my little digital recorder and you know, asking questions and everything. And as I'm walking through on camera, they, yeah, I thought it was a moth, but the medium told me it was a fairy and it flew around me and then disappeared. Well, you think, oh, well, it's just a bug, it's a moth, whatever. Okay. Except when we went and we played it over. One of the one of the girls got her camera out and she was videoing the video and she wanted to post it on Facebook. When we played it back, there was a voice that popped up on there that said, That was me. No way. Oh my God. Yes. That's crazy. That's amazing. Like so, that overlapped with the time that you saw moth, what you know. And I, I didn't see anything in the room. The house is empty, wow. but nothing was in there with me. And I think oh. I would have noticed, you know, it, as big as it was, I think I would have noticed. But you can go look at it. I have the video up on my on my uh, YouTube. And even if it was a moth, where'd that voice come from? Right. I <laughs> you think of like... I, ITC, you know, do you said in like it was inter uh, interdimensional trans communication where like they'll imprint voices on electronics, yeah, which is oh, it's and, it's. And I'm one of these people. You tell me a fairy, I'm like really a fairy. You know, same. I yeah. Don't, <laughs> yeah. But it's showed up in different videos of me just me and this medium has said you have a fairy that follows you when you do these things i'm like what but there's two different videos you can see this thing flying one at one point it actually flies through me interesting go to so it does, and see what you think what does she think a fairy is is it like uh, like some uh, like uh, fairies of like the children's shows but they like live in other dimensions i mean how i don't like because if there were fairies here so not i mean they'd be physical beings with wings you know yeah. i mean they couldn't fly through you so she must interpret it as an interdimensional that's thing. the no, that's the thing she didn't say an interdimensional but maybe it is they're just i think it's another form of a spirit hmm. Okay, so, which would be interdimensional because that's a different and, uh, for how I talk about dimension. Yeah, yeah. And, and you won't find a whole lot of evidence on my pages because I am so skeptical. But these are a few of the things that I'm like, you tell me what you think it is. You know, I, I leave it up to interpretation. I just can't explain it. Right, right. Yeah, there's so much I've experienced too where I'll say like, like there's there's a quote I love. I believe uh, Diane Stevenson would be the one who said it. One of the past life memory researchers. Um, I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying it happened. And I'm like, oh, I love something about that because then, you know, when, you know, certain skeptics will be like, there's no way that can't be. Like, there's no way consciousness could survive. And, or myself. I mean, I still have a very skeptical mind. So when I'm doing saying that stuff to myself, I'm just like, okay, so it's not true. But this happened. Like. You literally sat down in front of a stranger who had a fake identity and they knew stuff about your dad. They knew his name. They knew a memory. Like they literally knew things they could not have. And not all. I mean, I've definitely gone to some mediums that were terrible. And wow. I've gone to two that I would say were frauds. Um, a bunch that believe they can do 
a better job than they can and a few that just uh, blew me away you know but I think even I, I do not think most are dishonest I think most are just not as evidential as they could be and right. some are or some just aren't mediums and they believe they are you know based on their upbringing like they have an intuition for people but I think a lot I think the level of the assumption that most are frauds when they're not good has turned out to be incorrect like I can actually share a personal experience of mine uh, related to that where I think if you grow up or you're surrounded by a culture that believes a lot of this there's a lot of stuff you can just no, and some people are better at it than others and you deduce it from logic and we probably do this all day unconsciously you know like i went to um a class on mediumship i took quite a bit of classes you know, studying it and i'm sitting with some people studying to be mediums and we all have to go around and like read each other and this is taught by a medium joe Scheel. he's also wonderful he's also a spirit artist and i um and so it was my turn to be a medium and you know i looked at it was like four women you know they're of a certain age they obviously lost a grandmother it's like all that stuff so i'm like okay guys i'm not claiming to be a medium i'm just going to say everything that pops into my head and it was accurate because logically you know it's like i'm obviously i'm logically i'm trying to do the assignment i want to do it respectfully i want to do it right and things are going to come into my head and they're coming in based on logic and they were right i was like oh you had a grandmother so your grandmother on the other side she loved to bake you know i think one was a lucky guess i was like oh and i see you sitting there like the little girl and you had like you wore your hair in two ponytails and your hair was dark and you sit at her kitchen table eating cookies like there's not there's people that wouldn't apply to that most of that wouldn't apply to me the way but there's a large majority and it turned out it was all right and it was very I wasn't cheating but it wasn't mediumship it was logical and most likely to be right and you know if you're going to someone who believes in this and they're not like okay what was her name tell me something you know anyone would know that like I think there are people a lot of times and not all I do think I've met mediums who genuinely connect but I do think there are people you deduce things logically some people can deduce more than others and yeah. you know you're not being dishonest like you know Agreed. so I think there's a lot of that out there yeah I always thought it was a party trick mm -hmm. if it weren't for the details <laughs> yeah sometimes it is but for the the details that I got talking to the, the mediums that I've talked I yeah I'm with you I've I know some frauds, you know, the, you walk in and they say, well, all right, well, hand me $40 and, oh, you're going to you know, be rich one day and you're going to marry the person of your dreams and you're going to have that car you've always wanted in the house you always wanted and all this stuff. They're just wanting your money. Yep. You know, and they say you have a bad energy on you. I got that, you know, yep, you yep. need $300 candles to clear it. Yep. I've heard those too. Yeah. yeah. Said, Don't even. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I went to one of those, like you pick, you know, the ones on the street, the time, I mean, I was more doing it to test this and they were so different than the mediums, the good ones I'd gone to, you know, I feel like I've gone the whole gamut from the really scientifically studied amazing ones to like, total like frauds like that you know the selling the 300 hundred dollar candles the ones that i think maybe have i i'd you know ones that i think are very honest hearted and they just you know they can't do what they think they can you know yeah. a lot there's a few that i trust i mean truly trust and yeah. if you ever want to look them up on facebook um yeah one is april Bassett. Um, I'm geez. writing these down. Okay. April is remarkable. You, okay. you love just talking to her. Her energy alone, you love talking mm -hmm. to her. Well, actually, all of them that I mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. There's April Bassett, and then there's Rhonda Hale. Rhonda Hale? B no, R Rhonda. Oh, Rhonda. Okay. Yeah, like help me, Rhonda. Help, help me, Rhonda. Oh. And then Hale, H A L E. Okay. And then there's uh Nayeli Espiritu. And so I, don't ask me to spell it because without writing it down, I won't be able to. <laughs> Nayeli Hersitu. Her, es, es, Espiritu. 
Three, two. Okay. I mean, I think I can Google that and kind of do that with Medium, and I assume their page will come up. So. And then, then there's uh, Claire, uh, Claire Clifford Fennell. I think that's how I, I put it in the right order. Okay. <laughs> She's gonna kill me if I get it wrong. Oh no. <laughs> She's out of the UK, but she's oh, nice. she's wonderful. You can find her. She does live Facebook readings about once oh, a nice. week. Okay, uh, nice. But uh, yeah, you look them up. Those I trust them more than anybody. So. Yeah, yeah, I'll check them out then. Yeah, because you sound like me, skeptical, and you know, but that you're skeptical but open to evidence. Like, I mean, I think there is a lay a type of skeptic who is they're not that you can give them any amount of evidence and it doesn't register they won't see it they won't acknowledge it you know i mean i think you know go in just being like this person seems like they're defying the laws of the universe and when it keeps happening you have to admit it happens you yeah. know and what you make of that what you decide, decide with that you know i who knows and Nayeli, by the way she is the medium that works on on my team so uh, Oh, okay. And she's the one that pulled stuff out of the air that people's like, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, and then come back and find out that she was right. <laughs> Pretty incredible. But um, yeah. so your your podcast, WTF podcast, uh, you, yes. you discuss these kind of things. Um, hundred percent. I actually feel like my guess might be really interesting hearing your story too you know as an <laughs> investigator if you ever go on other podcasts i feel they would you know i i yeah. do go on others from time to time yeah. um and yeah. how do people catch your podcast so you can find it it's you know we have similar types of discussions where i talk with people about evidence of afterlife and sigh and you can find it on my website we'll link to it um as well as it's on every podcast app. It's on YouTube. It's on Apple, Spotify, and you just but to find everything, you can go to wtfjusthappened.net, and you can find my Instagram, and you can find my book, which is available on Amazon. So, well, I want to put those links in the description so people can find it real easily. And you said your Thank website you. is wtfpodcast.net no wtf wtf just happened oh just net. happened i'm sorry because i feel like every time something weird happens i kept saying that line you know spelled out not just the initials but i'll stay away from the spelled out here gotcha. and i was yeah yeah and i know <laughs> others kind of say the same thing and we're i was like okay this is yeah she says what wtf he just forgot the name of the of the website just like that. <laughs> yeah but the website are it's just the initials i just say when i'm shocked the full phrase but the initials the website is literally just the initials i figured yeah that's probably also better for who you know google you don't really want some of the other words showing up in google search. <laughs> exactly. you might not get yeah yeah i mean looking into my seo i once had a bit of a disaster related to some of those words i was like oh god no this isn't that whole one i meant I have to do some cleanup work big time <laughs> i totally get it well yeah. fortunately we've come to the end of the show and i have to thank you for coming on and, and sharing that with us and uh, oh, if you, you ever ever want me to come on i'll be glad to i'll shoot you an email yeah and um i just want to thank you so much for having me on and giving me a chance to share my story and hope it helps some people in grief as well as people who are just plain curious you know to hear you know, maybe not the most typical perspective of an atheist who came to think there was an afterlife. So yeah, I hope <laughs> the extremity of that helps give people hope. That's really what I really want to do with sharing this story. So well, thank you again. And also want to thank all of you out there. If you are new to the channel, you just happened by. I appreciate you stopping by. And if you would please come back, just hit that subscribe button for my regulars out there. Thank you because it's because of you I get to do this. And so until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. Paul Boy.